Hi, my name is Jessica Marin. I work at PFB FCPAs in Oakland, Maine, and today we're going to talk about 1099s. A 1099 is a form that reports income other than wages, such as self-employment, interest, dividends, and rental payments from your property. Self-employment includes payment for individuals, sole proprietorships, partnerships, and LLCs that get payment throughout the tax year. You need to file a 1099 if you have a trade or business and you pay someone over $600 during the tax year. This someone is an independent contractor and they perform services for you other than employment services. A rental property is an exception to this and if you don't have a trader business within the rental property, then you will not need to file a 1099 for them. You need to file a 1099 so that the IRS can track from the business return expense to the individual's income tax return to be sure that the expense being claimed is also being claimed as income on the individual's tax return. The difference between an independent contractor and employee is a complex question. The basic overview is that an independent contractor requires that they control their own workload, they set their own hours, they run their own business, and they have insurance that covers their services. If this is the case for you, you do have an independent contractor and you will need to file a 1099 for them if you pay them over $600 during the tax year. In order to get the information needed, a Form W-9 needs to be filled out by vendors that you plan to pay during the year. This form will allow you to receive all the information needed to fill out the 1099 once you pay them over $600 during the tax year. Once you receive the form back, you can import this information into your accounting software, such as QuickBooks, and this will aid you in the actual preparation of the 1099. Accounts that you should look to are service-based accounts, such as repairs and maintenance and subcontractors. The most common form of 1099 is the 1099 miscellaneous. This is used to report things such as non-employee compensation for your independent contractors and rents paid during the year. The next two common types are 1099 interest and 1099 dividend and those are used when someone is paid more than $10 throughout the tax year for interest or dividends. There are two deadlines associated with the Form 1099. The first is when the recipient copies are due to the person that performed the services. This date is January 31st. The second date is February 28th, and that is when the IRS is required to have their copies. If these forms are filed late, there is a tiered penalty system that will be assessed per form. We at PFBF understand that this is a complicated matter and we are here to help you. If you have any questions regarding the 1099s or any other tax related question, please contact us at PFBF CPAs in Oakland, Maine. Again, this is Jessica Marin and I'm from PFBF CPAs and thank you for watching.